Good afternoon, everybody. This is Jason Glatzer, and we are here for a very special moment as we are about to embark on the 10th anniversary of the biggest poker festival of Northern Europe in the 2024 Kings of Tallinn. And we have some special guests for you today. We have the brains behind it all and Teresa Nuzian, and we have two of the poker players that have been here since the beginning, and Ane Beznek and Kelly Luminova. And uh, we're excited to, uh, to present to you what is going to happen this year at the Kings of Tallinn, some of the moments that happen throughout the 10 years of history. But we have 55 different events planned uh, this time around, numbered events with binds ranging from free for some of the satellites all the way up to 5,000 euros. We also have our iconic 1,100 euro main event. The team competition is back and many other things. So without any other further ado, uh, I want to present to you our two players that we have joining us. So first off on my left here is Kelly Luminova. So Kelly has been in the poker world for uh, about 15 years now, and she uh, spent a lot of time playing poker in Estonia before moving to Barcelona uh, and then coming back to Estonia again and has been to just about every Kings of Talent and big event that we've had here at Olympic Park Casino. Uh, so Kelly, how did you get into poker? What do you like about uh, the whole poker scene here in Tallinn? Well, <clears throat> it used to be like um, this uh, really social events. And uh, I think in no other country has this kind of poker community as Estonia, that uh, they actually are friends. And then this community has been growing since, well, I joined 2009. Uh, it's like a huge friend group, basically. And all the biggest names now have actually grown out from like being babies uh, playing uh, juniors uh, with us, uh, some pop poker like Marco Poplima, and now they're like superstars of the world, and we are these old parts who are <laughs> originals, <laughs> and we are like, um, well, yeah, we are this old, um, what do you say, the, the dirt of the earth <laughs> <laughs> from where some young people have uh, nourished. But uh, yes, it's a, it's a community. And and uh, that's the main reason why to keep on going for so many years. It's not just about the tournaments or the money. It's 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 a social event where people come together. Yeah. And Anna, you've also been with us since the very beginning. You've actually been coming to the casino even before that time. So what is it that you like about the Kings of Tallinn, about Olympic Casino, and about? Uh, about poker in general, why do you come and play poker? What do you think? I think I have been all of those. So, uh, I think Kelly just said all that what, what I was thinking to say, because it's not only about the poker. It's I love Tallinn, I love Estonia. It's my favorite country in the whole world, and, and, and I have been there a lot. But it's still my top three. And it's a Finnish uh, party of sorts here. I mean, there's a lot of Finnish players with the help of uh, Teresa, our tournament director, and uh, people like you are adding to that environment. So is it a basically also a way that you're catching up with the Finnish poker community, or, or are you able to also do that back home in Finland? <sighs> Not so easy to answer. Because <laughs> I think this is... Um, Helsinki people, they say that this is East Helsinki. Tallinn. So there is more Finnish people than I, I never see in Finland playing poker. You understand what I mean? <laughs> so I love to be here. Good, good. And uh, Teresa, I mean, this doesn't happen without you. Teresa is the founder of the Kings of Tallinn. Uh, she's seen it grow from just a concept to what we have today, which should be the largest ever Kings of Tallinn that we've had in the 10 year history. So what, what, how did this come about? Like, how did this growth happen, Teresa? Yeah, I, I mean, the, the first one we did ever in 2015, we had 140 uh, main event players. And I think we did, I don't know, 10, 15 events back then. And um, from the very beginning, I think we somehow managed to to um, keep this, I mean, like Kelly, Kelly put it so nicely, I, you know, the, the whole social aspect of, of Kings of Tallinn, I, I mean, I've, I've been always 
uh, trying to, to, to keep it that way. I mean, for me, obviously the tournament schedule is an important part of the festival, how you build it and what kind of events you provide and, and, and present. But, but overall, I mean, for me, the, the most important thing is that people are enjoying having fun and you know, and and obviously, of course, that the tournaments are professionally run, and and all of that. But um, I think we've managed, and I'm so happy that we've managed so far to keep this this uh, vibe, this good vibe, and that's what I love about Kings of Tallinn. Okay, that's good. And uh, I mean, the the amount of mixed games that you have on the schedule certainly does add to that because mixed game players typically do come to obviously compete, but to also have uh, have fun. So the schedule does play a bit of a part, but obviously it's stuff like the team competition, the ladies event, the celebrity event. Uh, so I assume all this is going to be included in this year, but what what, what is to be expected in uh, the 10th anniversary edition of the Kings of Talent? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, first of all, well, we started in 2015 and yes, this is the 10th time Kings of Tallinn uh, is, is put together. But uh, we, we're actually planning on having the actual 10-year uh, uh, anniversary Kings of Tallinn maybe the next time. Focus on a little bit more on that. But, but um, overall, uh, th these mixed games, I'm a mixed game lover. I, I really love them and I've worked with them for you know, the beginning of, of my career. And, and um, I always try to put in, I mean, when I built the, the tournament schedule, uh, I I always try to ask players what they want and what they you know what what do they want to see in a schedule what do they want to play, and and put them in and and the end result is that we yes we do have a lot of mixed events and and we have the open face Chinese that hardly nobody ever does anymore, and uh, and some other events and if I try to take away one of these special events like mixed events from the schedule immediately a player would come back and say hey like we're missing this one like why but um but yeah it's um it's it's been quite a, a long ride but a fun one yeah it's definitely a fun one and i believe i joined you guys on year number three i would have to look back at my timeline but i think it was sometime around 2016 or 17 so either year two or year three so i've witnessed a lot of this growth that has happened, including placing a 500,000 guarantee on the main event, which happened the last few years outside of the pandemic period where that was impossible. Uh, but uh, yeah, the growth has been tremendous from an outsider point of view, and I'm insider outsider. Uh, and uh, yeah, the players do love coming, whether it's Hold'em players for the plenty of Hold'em tournaments, but mixed game players come from throughout Europe. We've even mm -hmm. seen some come from the United States and Canada. Uh, from Japan, from Korea, from Australia, mm. from New Zealand. So they yeah, come from we, all over yeah, the place. We have players from over 30 countries every single time. And I mean, I just want people to have fun and enjoy. But at the same time, I want to make sure that all the tournaments run professionally. So we have a great team, like, you know, the whole team, media and and our floors and, and dealers. We, we have great people in. So that helps as well. Good, good. Kelly, uh, what are your expectations, or what are the expectations, let's say, from the players for this year's uh, Kings of Talent? Like, what 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 are things that you're most looking forward to? Oh, I would like to win one. <laughs> uh, fun. I would like uh, people to have fun, and then sometimes people take it too seriously. I think, like, they're killing other people's vibe, or, I mean, this is a festival. This is a event. It's it's. Don't take it so serious, unless it's like uh, this high roller, I don't know, final table or final table somewhere. Enjoy don't, what you're enjoy doing. Enjoy what you're doing. And, and if somebody cracks your aces, like don't uh, curse them out and just don't kill other people's vibe that uh, maybe you are happy that they won with, I don't know, pair of twos or whatever, you know, just to have fun. And you're obviously going to play the Queens of Talent mystery about the event because you did win am, that back at the Queens am, of Talent Festival. So I you am need defending to defend it. champion of that, yes. The first and defending champion of that yes. event and also the first champion of the first ladies event at the Kings of Talent. So you have two firsts under your belt. So yes. does that take 
more pride for you than let's that say even the main event. Old, I guess that makes me very old. <laughs> no, yeah, it, of course, so of course, I'm proud of it. I'm, I'm very sad that I can't wear my 2015 euro. Um, trophy around my neck i would do that gladly <laughs> so that was a good idea to to make them wearable you know yeah this is the, uh, the trophy bigger, from the queens of town <laughs> yes. that you're wearing around your yeah. uh, neck it's a very nice unique very idea proudly, though. <laughs> yeah so for those of you who who don't know we well when we did the the first ever queens of tallinn uh, last year uh, we decided to do instead of uh, trophy trophies, we had these necklaces. And obviously, Kelly has one because she won one of the Queens of Tallinn events. But uh, I think it was a fun idea. Yeah. Although I, I wouldn't mind to also have a trophy about this on the mantelpiece. So. <laughs> Get one from here. We got you know both. Both. I mean, they should go together. Yeah. 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 Maybe maybe at next uh, Queens of Tallinn that can be incorporated. Then, then it's more motivation to win one. And Anne, you you have won uh, a couple of events here over the years. Uh, what are you looking forward to playing personally? I know that ladies' events you kind of have a love hate relationship with. Uh, sometimes you like playing them, sometimes you don't. But you usually look forward to another event on the schedule. So, what what are you looking forward to playing? And this event, I'm gonna win all tournaments. All the tournaments. Yes. No way! And you guys have no, a team. I'm here for fun. You also. guys have a team as well. Yes, they have a nice team. Yeah, we have quite the international too. Is it the queens of blank blank no. everything? No, not not same team as usual. Now we have two Swedish. Okay, one is all Swedish. No, he is Swedish, and one Norwegian and me. Oh, yeah, that's nice. You have a mixed yeah. team, and that's what I love about the the team challenge, by the way, because like. Um, People come in and some don't have teams. Uh, there might be three people in a team. They're looking for someone or they just suddenly put together a team. And we see these international teams coming together, yeah. like like on this team, you know, you, they, they come together and they form teams. No matter, you know, it doesn't matter where you're from, but it's more about, you know, good people in the teams and all of that. And it, it I think it brings such a good vibe to to the whole thing that we're doing the the team challenge but the fact that people come together from different countries they don't necessarily know each other and they just put together a team and then they go the whole 10 days like cheering for each other and i that i love that i've done that many times so yeah. i yeah. never have a team before i enter the team competition is one of the nice aspects of uh, the one of the many nice aspects of the Kings of Thailand. But it's exactly how you describe. As a reporter myself, there could be a, like a very small side event, uh, but you'll see a rail on that small side event because team points are yeah. important. And uh, even people that are coming here for the first time, it's the perfect icebreaker for them. They come oh, yeah. up to Cheering people like to Teresa and need a team. Teresa says, well, these two people also need a team. Let's wait for one more and then we make a team. And then all of a sudden these people are friends years and years and years later because of this initial interaction by needing to be on a team. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a funny story, actually. We had a, a one team, I, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, but we had a team that came together here. There was one person that was looking for teammates. Then walked around and asked around and then finally there was like four people from different countries they put together this random team and they 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 didn't know each other at all and they they came together and they won the whole team competition and and for those of you who don't know what the team competition is about it's it's a free role that we do players collect points from um entering the tournaments they get points to the team it's free to enter a team. You collect points from all the tournaments and you collect points by cashing. So it's like an additional competition to the tournament uh, prize pools and all of that. And uh, and at the, the end, at the end of the festival, we will have a winning team. This time, top five teams will be uh, paid, but uh, yeah, it's truly a fun thing. And the prize pool grows quite a lot very often. The winning yeah. team is sharing more than 20,000 euros, which is a nice chuck yeah, and change. Yeah, I mean, last time the, the team, because what we do is we, we put 2% aside from the regular tournament's prize pool. So we put 2% aside and that becomes the team challenge prize pool. And uh, last time it was 45,000 in that 
team prize pool. So it's it's good money. That's very good money. And for those of you that are thinking about best strategy, it's not always to play the main event as many bullets as possible because you're going to get one point uh, for just entering that. You're not going to get a second point for re-entering. It's entering as many events throughout the day and hoping for a deep run in at least one of those. But just those single points for entering events, they add up. And if you're looking to make a team, you want to have the active players uh, because the points from the main event are not going to add up enough to carry you through for the team competition if you're not also playing a lot of side events. So it's really a true test of endurance, a true test of teammates supporting each other, teammates pushing each yeah, other. Yeah, so supporting. I love it because it's so fun to see people there like cheering for each other and you're like, come on and let's go. And it's it's fun. And Kelly, do you have a team yet? No, I never have a team. You never I, have a I team? I always take a last moment team. But are you because, playing today? No, because uh, I only planned at first to play the main event. But okay. now that I'm here... <laughs> we may yeah. see you on a team today. But, but usually the teams that are um, made before, they ask who plays a lot of... Uh, who plans to play a lot of games. And since I didn't plan to play a lot of games, I was like, okay, well, I'll get here and then let's see. Because... Uh, yeah, there, there will be a team looking there for a team. Be, there anyways, will be so, a team who wants. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, okay, now we're talking a lot about this team challenge, but it is such a fun thing. And already in December, I mean, we are now, the festival is end of February, but already in December, people were looking for yeah. teammates and, and trying to put together teams and all of that. So, yeah. So we, we've talked a bit about the team challenge. We've talked a bit about uh, the fact that we have 55 events. So one thing we haven't talked about, Teresa, is really like a little bit of a dive into uh, the schedule. So we have a 1K main event that's obviously the crown jewel of the festival. It's a no limit hold'em affair with a 500,000 guarantee. Uh, there's a 3K high roller, a 5K high roller. Uh, we mentioned already the 150 euro buy-in. Queens of Talon mystery bounty event for the second time in history, the first time as part of Kings of Talon. But there's also tons of other events, whether they're Hold'em or mixed games. Maybe you can dive a little bit deeper into the schedule for us. Yeah, I mean, 55 tournaments in a schedule, and it like it's it's a big puzzle to put together because there's so many things that need to be taken in consideration and all the, the flow of the events. And so that a player, if a player wants to, can can join many tournaments and and all of that so so yeah what i do is when i start obviously we have the traditional events that we want to keep in main event the 3k and and uh, the ladies event and uh, and some of the mixed events so starting with that but then i always do notes so so doing the event during this kings of Tallinn, i will be doing notes uh, people i by the way Players, I, I love it because players come over to me and they give me feedback and, and they talk to me and, and and that's great because that's what I base the the very start of the tournament schedule planning on, what play, players want to see and what they want to do. And, and then it's about putting this whole puzzle together. And I must say that it's, it, it is a big puzzle. So I start with a version one and and then i move on and mm, in most cases i go up to like version eight before <laughs> i'm kind of like okay this we can start talking about so so yeah it, it takes a lot of planning and um and figuring out but um, at the same time it's fun to do it because i i take my notes and i take the player feedback and and that to me is the most important thing i i want to put in events that players have told me they want to see in the schedule and and uh, and if something is missing players will come and tell me and then for the next one i can you know take that into consideration so and I, want, I want to add here that uh, the one really really good thing is that teresa is really approachable actually <laughs> that maybe in many events you you can't just approach the director of the tournament and give your honest feedback but she's really really approachable so that's that has helped build this much mm, better yeah absolutely yeah. and it's not about you know me alone building this whole thing because it is i do it together with the players and and obviously also with my my work colleagues but uh but it's mo it is about the players the festival is for the players so so you have to like 
listen to what they want to see and, and do. And you also have the backbone of the amazing staff here at Olympic Park Casino, yeah. which are known for their hospitality. Uh, Krista, who has joined uh, a little more than a year ago, has really shown a nice impact on the direction of events here. So mm. I'm sure having uh, that level of support makes your life so much easier. Absolutely. You know, it's so important to, you know, have work with a company that wants to do this. And, and then it becomes so much easier because... Olibet and Olympic, they, they really want to put these events together and they are very pro poker. So um, I love it. That's that's why it's so nice to to do the events. And Chris, uh, I work very closely with Chris. Uh, uh, Chris is uh, head of poker re operations. He's the group poker director. And uh, so we work together uh, a lot and he's great to work with. So uh, all of this together is uh, is creating Kings of Valley. Very good. Yeah. And if you came here as a player to race, so what would be like your top events that you would play? Open face Chinese. I want to play open face. I love open face Chinese. It's my game. And it's like every single time because nobody else really does it. You don't see it anywhere else so much. And uh, so I never get to play myself. And obviously I'm not playing any of the events that I'm working. So oh, when why? we have, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would love to, but it's, yes. I can't. You was teaching that me. We can. In Malta. I'm, I'm a stylist. I think we can, we can give you a pass on the open face Chinese. Oh, I would. <laughs> it's really good. I would love it, but but uh, so when we do the open face Chinese events, I just walk around and I'm like, I'm so into it. I want to, you know, what are you doing and all of that. But uh, open face Chinese, I would love to play, and then probably maybe some other mixed games as well. And of course, the main event would be great. So if I wasn't here working the event. I would definitely be here playing and having fun. And having fun. That's yeah. the most important part then that, yeah. that both uh, Kelly and Anne have uh, touched upon. And, you know, there's events that are actually not really run anywhere else. I mean, the Finnish uh, stud, Tsuku, uh, I'm probably mispronouncing the Finnish pronunciation. Yeah, the five-card stud. But the five-card stud, I can't remember seeing that anywhere else. Uh, Sweet and special, you'll see, but it's mostly with a Swedish grouping. Yeah, but this now is it's a Swedish game. Yeah. But now it's an international game. It is, yeah. I think it's, it's more Swedish, yeah. 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 And it's kind of fun, too, that uh, when we started doing Sweden, Sweden, which is drama, basically, uh, with a twist, um, when we started doing it over here, it started spreading. And then suddenly I heard that it was being done in, you know, Vegas and, and it spread really. And I think it's being done in, in quite a few countries now, but it originated from a club in, in Stockholm. Yes. With uh, Anders. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. But the, the whole story of that game uh, being invented yeah. and, and I mean, Dramaha being invented around the same time in Vegas, you know, by different people. Exactly. And, and yeah, this they, they together. Came together. And, 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 um, I mean, the last one we did, we I think we had uh, around 100 entries for it. Uh, and um, and now this time, I think we will see the biggest ever Sweden now because people are coming over just because we have Sweden here. That's yeah, amazing. And if, if you go to certain places, it is growing now. You have in Malta, you have a weekly 40 euro buy-in event, Sweden oh, yeah, tournament, yeah. a weekly event at a low buy-in. And, you know, players are responding. They'd rather play that than come and play a 40 euro hold them tournament you know yeah. because they can have fun playing the sweet yeah. tournament because people that play mixed games typically understand that there's a big social element uh, to that and sometimes that gets lost in hold them players not at the kings of talon kings of talon that doesn't get lost usually at all because uh primarily because of the finnish players i have to say finnish players typically come and they want to have fun the estonian players are more than welcoming to people coming yeah and the swedes the and norwegians yes. they, you know everybody's yeah, yeah. Good but people. Uh, the, the Scandinavian players typically understand, yes, you can make a bit of money playing poker, but if you're not going to have fun, why are you coming? You mm. know, that's uh, kind of the bottom line is that this is about fun um, and it's also about poker. And this is the perfect combination is the Kings of Talon. Just my can, I, can, I, can I ask, maybe it would be wise to have a little uh, sweet and workshop before the event because local players like... <laughs> 
I have no idea what this is. Same. So maybe there should be like little like, I don't know, free roll uh, workshop. Yeah, we could definitely do something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. And like, uh, I don't know, winner of the wor workshop gets a, a ticket to that or, and then goes to win all, all this because has a fresh uh, new uh, this knowledge is, this is definitely a good idea yeah thank yeah. you yeah i will i would do that <laughs> i would join that's yeah, a good idea not only for the sweetin but also for games like open, open chinese. face chinese <laughs> or for you know five card stud uh, might be a little bit yeah. easier than some of the other ones Don't but uh, for all that <laughs> no but beginner's luck i think i played yeah. with jason too at some yes point. i think I? I i think i got lucky against but you though to be fair yes but for the sweetin i think the little workshop before three or slash workshop yeah i think it's a very good idea yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely yeah. i would join i put shall me, put, put them down in my notes. notes yeah <laughs> yeah and there's another unique event that i want to talk a little bit about because it's uh one of the things that uh makes kings of talent special and that's the celebrity event now to me when i see the celebrities i maybe recognize a few i do not live in estonia i do not live in finland but i see the room light up when some of these celebrities walk in and you guys may have different opinions on this, on what the celebrity event means to you, but Teresa, maybe you can start and let us know how the celebrity event came about and the importance of the celebrity event to the Kings of Talon. Yeah, I think the original idea actually came from from uh, somebody in the Olympic Casino, the, the poker manager we had then, back then. But um, so the, the celebrity event is a regular No Limit Hold'em event. And uh, it actually has grown into our most popular, one of our most popular events. So we get like 300, 350 entries into it. And um, so it's, it's a regular event, but then we invite um, celebrities to play. And um, if you knock out a celeb player, then uh, you get uh, a, a special bounty for it. Uh, but um, to me, it's a fun event. Um, it's it's not so serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly. Why it's so fun. Yeah, do you enjoy it too, Ami? Do you enjoy it because of the atmosphere or because yeah. there are these famous players, uh, uh, the famous people that because are actually I, playing poker? I have to say, I don't know those famous people. So you're the most famous <laughs> thing yeah. among the poker community. No, it's compared really, to them. I, I like it. I mean, it's it's not so serious. It's people speaking and laughing and mm, you know, having a drink getting, and having yeah, some fun yeah. yeah good times yeah but this is an event that is open for all and and like when we do this i don't the only the ladies event is is not open to all because it's a ladies only event but uh, because overall because sometimes i get questions like okay can i can i join the celebrity event yes it's an open event we're just uh, doing a no limit hold'em event with a twist I love the celebrity event personally. So as you know, uh, there were times where I was just covering and helping out with the main event. And I would come a few days earlier because I do like to play as well. And uh, mm -hmm. I would make sure to play this celebrity event because of the uh, the fun as atmosphere. But I've met some interesting people yeah. over the years. So I met uh, Kim uh, during that time. Mm, that Kim Harold. Malta. Yes. Oh, no, no, oh Kim, no, the other Kim. The other Kim. But I also met Kim Harold as well oh, uh, I mean, through, uh, through this as well. We also played at the same table. So you... You just understand uh, that poker is meant to be fun. You know, yeah. I grew up playing poker on my kitchen table uh, with yeah. my family and with and friends. I mean, with, with the celebrity event is is our traditional event and one of our traditional events. And, and it's one of the most popular ones. We, we get so many players for it, 300, 350 entries. And um, it's a one day event, but it's a great one. But uh, we also build these meet and greets and a little bit fun around it so when the tournament itself starts at 7 30 at six o'clock we we start the thing with a meet and greet we take uh, a few drinks inside the casino and and meet people so everybody that's going to play this celebrity event they come to the casino they have a drink we have some entertainment and just a little bit of chat chatting around and then we move upstairs and uh, and start the actual tournament. But uh, the meet and greet, this time we actually have a, a surprise. Ooh. So I hope that everybody that can, please come over because we have a, a little bit of a surprise for the meet and greet entertainment part. A little bit of a teaser there. That's yeah, very yeah. nice. And is the meet and greet open to people that are, let's say, playing at different events? Listen, if you're not if you if you're not playing kings of tallinn if you don't play the tournaments and you're kind of new and you just want to come and check it out 
come and take a look. Enjoy, like, join us for the meet and greet inside the casino from six o'clock onwards. Have a drink with us and you can come upstairs. You can watch the tournaments. You can, you know, have a drink by the tournament bar and just watch and see the vibe. You don't have to play. Just come and visit us and, and take a look. Very good. And uh, Kelly, uh, what do you think from a player perspective? Is the celebrity, let's say the celebrity event went away or let's say the celebrity event was done differently. How do players react from no, the Estonian community? I think it's the, like the a staple of this event it, it 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 sets the mood for the whole uh the whole i think it used to be like the first opening event no it was uh, always in the beginning uh, no, no you kind of mix it up a little bit but uh, yeah it used to be the the like the big opening event and everybody came to have fun i think it was the cheapest event also so it's basically like uh, we have Rahva event or new players game we have on Sundays uh, in in the casino. Easy to join. So it's it's yeah. it's like the stepping stone for anything else, and 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 you don't have to worry so much about losing because you come to get the experience. Mm. And I mean, it it used to be in the beginning of the festival, but <clears throat> now that the festival, because the whole festival used to yeah. be like you know one week, five, I... six, seven days, yeah, yeah, and now we're doing ten days. Mm. Yeah. But that's the, the that gives like a, the shebang to the whole festival. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, if, you, if, you, if you want to try out the festival for the first time for not being afraid losing much money, then that's the best to try out. Yeah, and it, we're definitely going for a bang this time uh, with oh. this surprise. So yeah. I'm looking forward to this surprise. Me I, too. <laughs> I wish we can ask for more teaser for the surprise, but you're going well, to have to see for enough, yourself. Huh? I, I, I'm teased. <laughs> I'm teased. <laughs> I don't like surprises, but I have to come and look. What is that? You don't like surprises, but no, you I like surprises. Like, but I'm, yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> And we, we've talked a little bit about the Queens of Talon, but I want to circle back into that because we're diving into some of the events. Now, the Queens of Talon uh, has been a staple. It's had different names over the years. The Queens of Talon brand, though, is here to stay. And for the first time at the Kings of Talon, the Queens of Talon uh, event is now a mystery bounty. Uh, it's not the first time that this is hosted, though, because as we mentioned earlier, Kelly won the first ever uh, Queens of Talon, Ladies mm -hmm. Mystery Bounty at the festival in November, December time. Uh, so, and Ani, Ani seems a little bit jealous. You have a chance to become the second ever no. uh, as well, but <laughs> Kelly, you have to go through Kelly to get that done. She got the uh, third place, so she's fine. And she got the biggest bounty, so she's yeah, fine. I got the biggest bounty. She got the biggest yeah, bounty. You did. So. so let's first yeah. talk about that, actually. I wanted to talk about why it was it a mystery was one, bounty. One, but uh, 1,000 and... Yeah. So you, wanna, like you basically want a main event seat uh, to this festival through the Mystery Bounty Tournament, if we want to look at it that way. Uh, if you want a 1,000 Mystery Bounty and the Queens of Talon Mystery Bounty, some might say, Kelly, that Ani was a bigger champion than you. She no, won a bigger won bounty prize. Because I, no, no, I, no I, I got more. You got more, but I in one more. shot? No, I, because I got like four or five bounties, so I, I got more bounties as well. And I got the necklace. You were saying, well, your best. <laughs> no, he was playing really good. Now, when yeah. Kelly is focused, she's a very strong player, I have to say. Yeah. Uh, when, <laughs> if. <laughs> no, I've seen I've seen the other side of Kelly, too. Kelly coming in and not in the mood to play poker and coming in well, anyway. That's the that, social that Kelly, aspect. Uh, uh, that this doesn't do as in. well as the Kelly that's ready to win. Well, Kelly can play very well on third, third party, but if Kelly asses get cracked all the time, <laughs> Kelly gets out of mood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But what, what made you, Teresa, decide to put a, to make this one a mystery bounty instead of a yeah. normal format? Well, this is the thing. Uh, you know, everybody has been doing this same thing for the ladies' event. No. It's, a, it's a regular No Limit Hold'em. Uh, you put in a, a, a kind of a smallish buy-in. I want to change that. Like, why should it be No Limit Hold'em only for ladies? You can do many ladies' events. You can do different types. It doesn't have to be a, a, a regular No Limit Hold'em. It doesn't have to be a, a small, small buy-in. I mean, this is uh, this is Kings of Tallinn. We want to do something, something different. And Mystery Bounty events are great. So why can't it be a ladies' only Mystery Bounty? And, and uh, there's only one queen in Kings of Tallinn. There's going to be many kings maybe but only one queen yeah, yeah. so it's, it has to queen. be one true queen but if you win if you win uh, the main event I'm gonna yeah. call you the queen of Talon no matter what Kelly yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and in the no, reporting you will be the queen don't that's worry that's totally fine but still from the kings of Talon there's only one 
queen. So yes. it has to me. True. Yeah. And, and Kelly, uh, while we're on this topic, uh, how important are ladies' events in general, you know, to, to the poker community? I think they're very important, actually. And over the years, um, I think they have been become more important because the the level of the game has transferred what I've been playing about 15 years now from the first, I don't know when was the first ever ladies game, but I think 2009, 2010 in the Estonian championships, the level has skyrocketed. Like uh, when it used to be, I don't want to play with ladies because they can't play and they're all stupid. Then it's like, I don't want to play with ladies because I'm afraid. But they're all so good now. And then the, the, the overall perception of ladies events, I think, have shifted totally to the other side that it used to be. And how do we get some of the ladies to uh, feel more comfortable in an inclusive environment like the Kings of Tallinn provides to play some of the other events? Like, basically, uh, you have been, you play more open events and ladies events, and same with Ane. Uh, you're more than comfortable playing men, women, Oh, because uh, men are much easier to play. Yeah. <laughs> but how, 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 like your mindset is a little bit different than let's say the, the lady that first came for a ladies only event and then is only coming back for a ladies event. So how, in your opinion, how do we get them to feel more inclusive? What do, uh, and it may not be them, like what do men or what do others that are at the poker table need to do to make uh, the environment to feel more inclusive so that we don't see fields that are 90, 95% men because women can play, as you just said, poker as well, if not better than men. It's a mind game. It's not a, uh, you know, it, it should be fairly even. If you put the work in, you should be able to, uh, to thrive. I'm trying to remember a word right now because um, uh, every now and then men tend to be very patronizing maybe to, towards uh, women. And especially if you're a little bit older, or you're a foreigner, and then, and uh, especially like young guys who come from the internet, they are being borderline rude or patronizing, and that's that's the thing that maybe makes uh, some ladies uncomfortable. But uh, locally, we have here a women's league, nice the Liga, uh, which we have been doing now for I don't remember. Over ten years, yeah, yeah. I think it was fifteen years this this uh, this year. Yeah, there's a strong I, uh, yeah. ladies community so here. Yeah. We we have ladies poker community. When this uh, poker women league started, I think there was like fifty something people. This year was over one hundred twenty wow. oh, nice. players or something nice. like that. So uh, these ladies, many of them used to come only for ladies events but uh, now getting more comfortable with seeing how the live poker goes um yeah maybe the only side uh, bad side is some little bit chauvinistic little bit patronizing uh, behavior Obviously you use that of you course and that if you're smart to you use so. that you well i can't do this blonde uh, i don't know because i i look like they say that i look mean and and they're scared of me which is fine uh but some girls can totally use them to hit their advantage yeah and should sure. yeah but uh how to make it more inclusive maybe um some women are a little bit um afraid to come in with the bigger buy-in so this kind of celebrity event this is like perfect stepping tone to come and check it out how it's to play in like this environment of Fa, fa, fa players who think they know everything and, and especially nowadays when a lot of players come from internet they think they know everything and then well they don't they don't realize they're giving away live tells they, and things they, like that i love seeing people who are coming from internet you can tell them from afar but i guess one uh word of wisdom would be as as like a man you can also you you it benefits everyone for it to be uh, more inclusive that if you see something and you should always be nice in poker to... poker table you should always actually be nice just yes. be a decent human being and be nice yeah like there are people who are really like unpleasant because you know they lose with the hand and they stop start you know throwing uh, some insults around and whatever but uh, it's like just be decent human being and yep. be nice like treat mm -hmm. others like you want to be treated and and that's yeah. uh, should be one rule in poker i think 
And if you see behavior that isn't something that you find acceptable, you don't need to keep it to yourself. You could either try to get the player themselves to calm down. If you don't want to get involved, you can quietly talk to the floor uh, and oh, no, uh, get that resolved. Nobody wants to be a snitch, but yeah, sometimes there are instances that uh, like it's like, come on, it's 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 a game, and uh, yeah. this is not pleasant for anybody now. So that's a good point and uh, something that we can all learn from because it, I do believe that poker should be as inclusive as possible. I am a big supporter of ladies' events. Uh, shout out to uh, to Maureen who uh, educates me quite often about the uh, the ladies' scene, uh, and I do think that it's it's growing and thriving, which is good. It, it needs, but to, it it needs, needs to, to be stay. further it integrated. Needs to stay. It's, it's, it has its place in all the big festivals and everywhere. It, it needs to stay, and it's growing. I think also, Teresa can say that every year there have been more and more and more and more people who are uh, playing. We even broke a record in Vilnius during the Vilnius Icebreaker for the yeah. most women in events. So even like in other areas, uh, you even see the Vilnius. growth. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. and, I mean, and this time... <laughs> this and we don't time... have a thriving ladies community like you do in Estonia. Sorry, Teresa. No, no, no sorry about that. But uh, I just, uh, you know, this time we're also doing a ladies only meet and greet as uh -huh. well. So this will be on, on Tuesday, February 27th, uh, free to join. Everybody's welcome. Only ladies, though. This is ladies, <laughs> meet and greet. And uh, it will be on the tournament floor uh, on February 27th. This is a Tuesday when we have the celebrity and the, the actual meet and greet as well. But we started with the ladies only meet and greet at four o'clock. So if you play your cards that right, you surprise. can go to the ladies meet and greet have some good company, have some free drinks. And we have also walk ladies, around uh, a little. Uh, the uh, satellite then, no? I will do a, I have thrown in a, a special free tournament as well cool. for the ladies. Yeah. So then you'll have to choose whether to go to the regular meet and greet likely or play in this free roll. No, so we many do, choices. No, that's why, no, actually the way I did it for the, for the schedule, this is an added event, the, the, the ladies meet up, but um, it starts at four. And then um, it is a faster tournament that we do. And then um, when uh, we're done with it, we will join the actual meet and greet. And uh, I, I did the schedule so that we can all do all of them. That's good. So there's a, a meet and greet, all. some free poker, another meet and greet. So you have all this free value. Ladies and then, will be already in the mood then. And then, and then so. yeah, exactly. Then be in the mood for the celebrity <laughs> events. But that should that should be a lot of fun. So that's on Tuesday, which is amazing. And uh, Anne, what's what's your opinion about the the ladies' events that uh, both here in Tallinn or in general are they important to you personally? Are they important to the women's poker community in your opinion? Because you have a different point of view coming from Finland. It's important, of course, because I think we need ladies. I don't like to play with ladies because it's not so. It's easier to play with men. It's I have to say that because, but in Estonia it's easy to keep that ladies and, and keep the queens of Tallinn because I think Estonians have most of all world lady, ladies poker. Yeah, they have a strong because community. Of the community. Because yeah. of the community, because of like I told you, like almost 120 mm -hmm. unique players in Estonian women's because league. Because they so. have been playing that satellite and I have the group, messenger group. Mm. Um, but I think there is more than half is Estonian. Yeah, and I yeah. guess you guys like but meet is, outside of but poker there is a lot too. Of now, uh, uh, Latvian and Lithuanian. That's yeah. I like. Yeah, Lithuanians that. are yeah. rising. Uh, yeah, they're yes, getting yes. strong. Yeah. Threat, yeah, let's say definitely. There's <laughs> because I met both my couple of those in Queens of Tallinn. Yeah, and your Facebook oh. friends and and I add one and I say that you can add more and. Yeah, and now oh, you have a big group. Yeah, yeah. yeah but still half Estonian. <laughs> you say like it's a bad thing. Yeah, but no, no, still. no, it's good. It's good. I like Estonians. I say that always. Yeah, I saw just yesterday like uh, three Swedish uh, women left the group. <laughs> and hey, by the way, speaking of uh, Estonia, we have 
Independence Day coming yeah. up. The Estonian Independence Day is my mother's 75th tomorrow. birthday. <laughs> yes. Tomorrow, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's your mom's uh, 75th. Birthday. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. happy birthday! Yeah. Not to me. <laughs> no, but happy birthday to your mom. Yeah, happy yeah. birthday to Estonia. Estonia. Well. Estonia. To Estonia. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we we also do a Independence Day special tournament. Oh, that's well. a new one. What is uh, special about that uh, comparing to the celebrity one? Because no, we just want to celebrate. Mm -hmm celebrate together with the Estonians mm. and you know and independence day like president attending or <laughs> well <laughs> yeah of course that's the surprise no it's... yeah that would be a bang <laughs> no that's not Esto the before the Estonia Prime or after Estonia hello hello and now I'm off to poker no we want to obviously you know the independence day is always an important day uh for any country and uh and we want to celebrate with you. And it's a free day, so uh, it's a Saturday anyway, it's okay. Yeah. So outside outside the ladies' event, outside the main event, you, both uh, Kelly and Anne, you must have other events in your head that you are thinking of playing or that you must play. So I'm going to start with uh, Anne. What, what events do you plan on playing uh, this summer? I don't summer know else? yet. I'm going to decide that every morning. <laughs> and every in, morning in Finnish, you can we, choose we between... We say that it's muto. Musta tonto. So how... I go with the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And you have a lot to choose from each day, but in terms of the multi-day events, those are always better to plan out ahead of time. But in terms of the uh, one day, but you're side playing events the main event. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Honey never misses a main event. I mean, she has maybe once, but uh, <laughs> not in Thailand. <laughs> Did I don't I think. Do really? <laughs> yes. Here, but, no. And uh, Kelly, you plan on playing, I know, the ladies and the men. Is there I, anything else I that piques your interest? I have a ticket for the main event, but everything else is open still. Okay. No. Well, ladies event, of course, I'm going to go and defend my crown, but everything else is still open. So the ladies has a special place, obviously, being the first winner and being now the defendant champion yeah. of the mystery yeah, bounty yeah. event. And uh, I haven't seen the new uh, design for the new necklaces, though. <laughs> if you had to choose, I hope it's not the same because I already have this. <laughs> we're, we're doing that for queens, the tally. Oh, okay, queens. okay. But uh, the queen gets something wearable. The queen will get the the, the trophy, the the beautiful glass trophies what that you're we after. have. Oh, okay. You can make it into a crown, probably. So that's, that's a good uh, self defense. Uh, yes. <laughs> But is, is winning the uh, ladies' event, let's say the money was like out of the picture, let's forget about the money from like yeah, a, the is, not, is, not is, huge, is, the, is the main event more important for you to win than the ladies' event? Or would you like to continue being uh, the queen of talent with the ladies' events? Well, if we take the money out. <laughs> yes, if we take the money out from a pride perspective. Then uh, both. Both, it's equal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've cashed a couple of times in the, in the main event, but uh, never. Never in the final table, so... You've been the last lady nice. standing at least one time of memory? I've been the last woman standing many times, but uh, not enough to go to the final table. Well, maybe this is your year, Kelly. Actually, I want to be the last woman sitting still in the table. Yeah, you want to be just the last person sitting at the table. Yeah. yeah. Okay, very good. And uh, we have uh, players coming back uh, quite often. I mean, it's not just you, Kelly, coming from Estonia and you from Finland. So, Teresa, this is a good question for you. Um, what keeps players from returning year after year? There's some players that'll be here literally for the 10th time for a Kings of Talent. Yeah. So how, how do you keep them engaged year after year after year? I mean, this is obviously a question for the players, uh, but um, I'm, I'm happy and proud that players want to come back. And um, yeah, I, I hope that they come back because they're enjoying and I, I think so. I think that's one of the main main reasons. Maybe maybe also because uh, the schedule, um, which I try to put a lot of focus on. So players, you know, like like I mentioned earlier, they they give the feedback, and I try to always remember to put in what they have uh, talked about and all of that. Uh, so it's an important part. But I, I think. Uh, it seems, at least when I'm talking to players, it seems like players are are waiting to come to Kings of Tallinn to have fun, and that's that's just special. I'd like to add that um, the five years that I was living in Spain, uh, I came twice every year back to Tallinn, and once was always for the Kings. 
So that was the one time I came back and the other time was uh, two months in summer because it was too hot in Spain. But winter always for the kings. So you would come in the middle of winter, leave uh, beautiful weather in Spain and oh, you would but, come uh, here. You can't imagine how nice it's to go back. <laughs> <laughs> And, do, and why, why, why do you keep coming back? Why were you like, I understand when you live in Estonia, it's nice and easy, but from Spain, you're making a but concerted the, effort. Because it was the event to be in Thailand. For that time, I wanted even this horrible, look at outside what's happening, even this horrible, horrible time. It was not nice to be this, whatever it was, one and a half weeks in this no windows environment, <laughs> not to see what's happening outside and just being in this festival environment. And Ana, do you feel the same? What keeps you coming uh, back to the Kings of Talent? Mm, good question. The song. I can. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot skip this. Okay. Um, I decided to be here one week and now I came today, so I'm here 10 days, so after after this fun, I'm going to sleep, I think, uh, one week. <laughs> one week. That's the recovery time. One, come for 10 days, one week. And, yeah, uh, yeah you made a, a last minute uh, with, with change. My, with my guests, yeah. Yeah, you, you were supposed to be here one week and then you decided, okay, forget it, I'll do the whole no, thing. it's 10 days, yeah. so, 10 days, so. Yeah. So live, live poker, as you know, is generally booming throughout Europe, throughout the world, in fact. Uh, We've, ev we've seen numbers increase uh, here also at Olympic Park Casino, uh, partially due to the efforts of Teresa and Krister and the entire team at Olympic, and partially due to there's a higher demand for poker since the lifting of restrictions of the pandemic, which seem like ancient history, but really isn't that long ago. Mm -hmm. So with this in mind, Teresa, are you expecting records to be broken? Like what, what's your, what are your expectations for the main event and, and what are your expectations in general for the festival? Yeah, I mean, the, the last uh, main event, Kings of Tallinn main event, we, we had um, 716 entries. And um, uh, I expect that number. It, I mean, everything looks like um, the, that number will be uh, crashed. Crushed. Um, and um, overall, I, it looks like uh, we will be busier than ever, which is nice. That's good. I know that players responded quite well last year, not only to the Queens of Tallinn, which we've spoken a lot about, but from a more universal perspective, the World Series of Poker circuit coming for the first time. And that was a truly special event. Uh, the vibe was truly special. It's different than the vibe of Kings of Tallinn, in fact, uh, in unique ways. Mm. Can, can we expect to see that return as well later in the year? Well, we, we haven't published anything yet, but... Uh... Yes, you can probably expect it to uh, to come back. That's great news. And, you know, we had so many different ring winners throughout that uh, festival. It really created so many special moments. So uh, keep your eyes peeled on Alibet TV for when the dates of that will be released. It'll be later on in the year. But uh, yeah, we're not confirming and publishing um, any dates yet because we... Um, we are waiting for some uh, some uh, confirmations, but uh, but uh, we'll definitely do either that or something similar. Very Might good. be a surprise. Might be another surprise. Might I'm liking be another these surprise. surprises, <laughs> Teresa. Unlike Ani, I like surprises. Ani doesn't yeah, like surprises. <laughs> yeah, you have to come for. You don't like surprises, but then you get curious and you want to know yeah, about the surprise. So that's, you still like surprises yeah. because of the surprises that you don't like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, we, we spoke a bit about uh, players coming back uh, year after year. Uh, I'm one of those players, so I, I want to speak a little bit about my own personal views of uh, the Kings of Talent, both as a player and a media person. So I guess I'm asking myself a question and giving my, giving the answer. Uh, but as, as a player of the Kings of Talent, I, I just love the, uh, the variety on the schedule. Uh, for me personally, I like the mixed events. Like I would definitely play the main event for sure, but that's not the reason that I'm coming up. I'm coming up for the Svitan special. I'm coming up for the open face Chinese to play my first ever finish. Stud was here in Tallinn. Uh, to play my first ever do seven pot limit triple draw was here in Tallinn. Mm -hmm. You know, just to be able to play these fun games. And then of course the cash games 
which we haven't touched base upon running nonstop in just about any format and any stake. And then wearing a different hat and working uh, the festival, you know, the players are super friendly, easily approachable. The action varies quite a lot. You have some very good players mixed in with people that are just coming to have fun and maybe don't care at all about the result. It varies uh, so great that the um, the yeah, cream usually rises to the crop at the end. As well. Yes, uh, thankfully at Ali Bet now there's a lot of qualifiers from different countries and also the live qualifiers that ran. Uh, we had one in Vilnius that I was unable to make, uh, um. but they're at different uh, Olympic branded casinos around Europe, which is which is great because it adds the international mm. uh, flavor. But I personally love being here in any capacity. And if I wasn't working, I definitely would come for a, as a player and as mm. Teresa has known, when I haven't been working an event, she sues me here anyway coming up uh, that I mm. absolutely love it from from my personal perspective as well. And I didn't want to leave my personal thoughts about the festival uh, out that it's truly something special that came from nothing 10 years ago. The seed yeah. was born. The seed has blossomed. And yeah. now the seed has really branched out yeah, into and something I mean, truly yeah, special. Exactly. And I, I mean, I, I'm really proud of the fact that we started from zero and and just created this name kings of tallinn and 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 just managed to 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 make it into a, something that is now established and known all over which is really nice special and can we expect to see this brand let's say branched out beyond tallinn at some point yes okay yes is that another surprise that we shouldn't be talking about yes okay so Kelly, I have an interesting question that's very specific to your knowledge base, actually. Uh, a player coming to Tallinn for the first time, they may be happy being in the casino 24 hours a day because there's always something happening. But let's assume that this player also wants to see Tallinn. What are the, some of the things you'd recommend that they do, whether during the day or at night in Tallinn? Culinary experience. I think uh, Tallinn has one of really, really, really nice restaurants, really high quality. I think really nice really nice restaurants and then of course well the old city and there's a vibrant museum scene but i don't think that <laughs> that poker players are really interested in going to this really nice historical museums we also have this other special tradition that we do at the end of the festival every single time and it kind of started as an accident just a few of us going out at the end of the festival on the last day when everything is done and then more people joined and more people joined Haven't and about that. it has now become kind of a thing that on the very last day of the festival when everything is done we go out and have some fun do some karaoke we go to you know the the old city which is beautiful and uh, we go there and we we find a, a, a place to dine and then we go and sing and have fun and maybe even a few shots here and there and and then you're dead on on monday tuesday wednesday the whole next week but uh it's a fun tradition that we do you've been with us yes Kelly, haven't you been with us yeah, yeah i was just thinking where's my invitation <laughs> no no we, it it's is. just a it's just a thing that we started doing and and then just people joining I'm in join you it's very informal join you. but a lot of fun yeah and the uh, last time i I think we, I don't know, we were 150, 200 people. I, there was a lot of people just came in and I see people now uh, even planning their travels so that they don't leave on Sunday. They they leave maybe on a Monday because we have this fun night on the Joining you for a show. Sure. Please do, please the, do. The karaoke bar even now looks at the schedules of when like things yeah. like Kings of Town knows because they know that Sunday that uh, they're the going to get a phone already? call. We, we, they, they kind of know that we just show up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. It's nothing official and we don't want it, want to make it official either because we just want it to be, you know, a yeah, good, time, good time, good time. And, and, you know, everybody's welcome and. Well, now everybody mm -hmm. knows. So. Yeah. This don't is on the last the karaoke <laughs> bar name. Otherwise we don't fit there. There's not so many karaoke bars, although I saw a few oh, new ones are. open up actually are. recently. I there walked around really a little ones. bit in the old If town anybody was to join us, you're, you're so welcome and, and just come and ask me and well, yeah. I want to ask you then, Kelly, uh, one last question. Sure. So we I need to take you out of the equation because of course the answer is going to be I'm going to win. Uh, 
So maybe the question is who would take second place if you won, or let's say you just decided not to play. Who, who do you think is going to be some of the people that could win the main event and the what people, countries do you think will be represented? No, there's the, the, the person who has the best luck at that day because everybody who is playing uh, in the second day, uh, the main event, they are good players. They are solid players. So it's not a matter of whose, whose aces are going to be cracked. <laughs> And 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 uh, yeah, who whose day it is, whose turn it is to win? The stars, whose stars are aligned? Maybe you should do the some little uh, cards reading table here, you know. <laughs> do a little fortune teller. Yeah, just little fortune teller, so and people can bet on that, you know. Uh, but no, I don't want to say any names. I hope it's Estonian, that's for sure. What about countries then? Like Estonia. what countries do you think are stronger than others in terms of uh, Estonia. poker? Here? Estonia is the strongest. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And it's not because you're Estonian at all, Finland. not uh, being impartial. <laughs> yeah. You think it's what? Finland. Finland, well, and not Anna because you're impartial. from Finland. <laughs> and it's also impartial. Oh, you're not. <laughs> well, excuse me, the, the tournament director is Finnish, so I think it's a little bit... <laughs> well, she, she was born in Sweden, and she... she uh, so also Swedish got to be in the final, I guess. <laughs> so, no, yeah, so Estonians have to just fight for themselves. <laughs> but I mean, uh, regarding that, actually, that part, I, you know, I, I've spent so much time in, in Tallinn, Estonia. I feel, you know, I'm, I'm just... Same. I'm not from a specific country. I'm, you know, I've been here so much that I, I you know, I feel that uh, I'm part of this community as, as well. As long as the flag next to the name is not Estonian. <laughs> And then you have people like me that are just nomadic mutts with, from so many different countries in general, born in the United States, but haven't lived there in more than two decades, yeah. living in Lithuania for 15 years. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. am I? I'm nothing, you know. I'm, uh, I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm oh, not American anymore. <laughs> I'm not quite Lithuanian, you know, so You're we have worth fun with it. that. I'm a man of the world. I'm a man of the world. Yeah. But interestingly enough, Kelly, uh, it wasn't last year, it must have been a year or two ago, there wasn't a single Estonian. On the final table of the Kings of Thailand main event, it was like the last one went out 12th or 13th. They didn't even make it close to the final table. So, yeah, so they'll I, need to make I, a better showing this time I, around. I think they will. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb. I'm going, I've am been thinking since I asked the question who I would select to win. And we, we were talking about Yari Porker a little bit earlier today. And I think he is well Yari overdue. Porker, on my team. And he's on your oh, team, he's on it. your team. Okay. So we'll, we'll say that he will be my selection if I'm allowed to gamble he's on really the solid, winner. Solid player. I'm yeah. going to bet. But I, I, have to, yeah, right. I have to say one thing. Rano Sotla, he's, yeah. he's been with us from the very beginning, just mm -hmm. like Kelly over here. And um, uh, obviously, I've seen him, you know, when he started the poker and and came in as a junior and and played uh, the smaller events and uh, he's grown so so strong but he won our very first kings of tallinn main event back in 2015 and last year he won one of the uh, world series of poker circuit tallinn events on his birthday it was his birthday when he was declared the winner and the uh, of this green event i think it was a 600 uh, uh, Euro mystery bounty that he won. So uh, he's definitely, uh, uh, I think he's uh, one to watch out for. Yeah. Marco uh, Coplima is going to be playing. Oh, and Marco. Yeah. Yeah. Marco. But Rado is definitely very interesting yeah. because at the time when the Kings of Talon was first starting, nobody knew about the Kings of Talon and nobody knew about mm -hmm. Rano. Mm -hmm. And then together they kind of just boomed onto the scene. You know, mm -hmm. Rano from that point then got some international recognition. Mm. and has gone on to crush tournaments and now he's mostly a cash game player that comes mm. to play tournaments for fun yeah oh, and you missed us with one day you should have uh, yesterday played something the warm-up day <laughs> well oh, she had sorry. a birthday yesterday no <laughs> and um and and then we have some bracelet winners as well um um well uh rano, rano is one of the bracelet winners but uh from finland um Jani Vilvonen. uh he's a very strong player uh, he's coming in to play everything. I think he's coming in today, so for the whole festival. Um, but there's there's a lot of interesting names coming. Uh, you always have, see Ilari Sahami is Sigmund. He'll We've always had you provide Helpi some. won this a few years ago as well. Juha Helpi has won. Uh, Juha Helpi has won one of our Kings of Tallinn main events. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is he coming back? Um, yes, he's definitely coming back, but uh, not for this. Ah, okay. 
So I think that wraps things up, guys. I want to thank uh, everybody for attending the show. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Anne. And uh, thank you, uh, Teresa, who is taking time out of her busy day with the Kings of Talon. Starting today, it's running from February 23rd to March 3rd. And there's 55 different events. So check out the schedule and uh, maybe we'll see you here at the Kings of Talon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you.